Welcome everybody. Welcome back. I'm so excited to be here. My we're Paul on the call. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. Yes, and we are here with Studio Studio La Femme. I'm so in excited. Michigan. <laughs> yes. Gee, I was looking at the pictures and I was like, they're gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. We worked here... hard to give off that impression. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Um, We're here with speaking first... today with owner Fallon and Aspen, yeah. who's an instructor, right? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for being first... with us today. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your um your service. I want to start by saying that, especially I was reading the biography, and my partner says thank you for your service as well. Truly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> well, do you want to tell right. us a, a little bit about um, Studio La Femme and where it's located and when it opened and all of that good stuff? Yeah, let's do it. So we are located in this tiny little town called Coldwater, Michigan. It's in the like southernmost part of Michigan. Um, and the studio kind of started as a community um what five years ago yeah five years ago um is that right no eight years ago 2015 it was January of 2015 um and it kind of happened on accident it was this beautiful accident that happened um I've pulled for 14 years and I moved to what I thought was a small town, but it's three times the size of the town that we're currently in. <laughs> so I had a bit of culture shock and um, I missed the pole community. So um, the closest studio from where I was at was four hours away. Um, and so during the day I worked in mental health and um, I was just missing kind of the self-care and um, camaraderie that comes with the pole community. Um, so I asked a couple of my girlfriends, five of them actually, if I could teach them how to give a lap dance to their partner for Valentine's Day. And they were like, yes, let's do it. And so it was really funny because we were all mental health professionals. And um, we asked this lady who owned a mental health facility if we could like sneak in there after hours to practice our dirty little lap dancing. <laughs> and so so we brought in like our little lean to mirrors and stuff and set them up and everything. Um, and it was just for fun, right? It was just like to have a good time. Um, and then this kind of gets into the ethos, but I'll try to make it short. Um, what I noticed though, was as I was teaching these women how to move centrally and tap into that side of themselves, they started saying a whole bunch of negative things about their bodies and about who they were kind of thing. Like, oh my God, I'm so stupid. I'm so fat. I'm such a, a dumb A, whatever. I cuss a lot. I'm going to try not to. So I'm going to try to be really edited. Um, so they were like, oh, I'm such a dumbass, whatever. Right. And just engaging in all this negative self-talk which drove me batty because we we're all mental health professionals. And I was like, you guys, I'm trying to teach you how to move sensually and you're sabotaging it with your words. So we're making a rule that here you cannot say anything negative about yourself just for this one hour. Cause it was a six week kind of series before I was a studio, you know? Um, and so then they stopped talking shit on themselves, but then I swear to you the next week, they come together and then they were all talking smack on everybody else. And I was like, listen, we cannot do that either. We are not going to bond over degrading other humans. If you can't talk shit on yourself, you're definitely not talking shit on Susie across the street. No, it's not happening. Right. And so the rule number two was now you can't say anything negative about anybody else. We will not bond over degrading other humans, period. That is not who we are. We are better than that. Okay, cool. And then this like, Kind of magical thing happened um where if they just stopped for that one hour once a week then it kind of transcended outside of there and they were nicer to themselves at work and in their relationships and so on and so forth right and so then it was just this lap dance thing that was going to happen for valentine's day but then they started telling their friend and their mom and their sister and their aunt and whatever and so they said hey have you thought of maybe opening up a studio or teaching classes like as a thing. And I was, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it. 
So I was like, well, let's give it a go, you know, and um, we posted about it on just our social medias. I rented a spot at a community center and the first day it was just wall to wall with women. They flooded in like masses flooding in and I had no idea um, that we would have that effect, um, that it would be that huge. And also that the need for a place to move centrally, but um, practice the kind of like positive thought processes that we really push I didn't know that there was such a need. So anyway, long story short, we outgrew that space. And so then we went to a different space that I was subleasing um, at a badass gym in um, Grants Pass, Oregon. Um, and I was teaching there. And it, was, it started as just burlesque classes, even though I was a polar. Um, and it blew up. It was huge there. Um, and then I moved to Michigan. And I didn't know if there would be a need here in this itty bitty town. And so I subleased a space. And it was wall to wall right blew it out we you know and so we had to find a new space and so on and so forth and then that whole time I was saving um all the money because I knew I wanted to open a brick and mortar so our brick and mortar opened in July 2020 right smack dab in the middle of COVID <laughs> so mm -hmm. and Aspen was with me the whole entire time as soon as I came to Michigan she's been with me the whole time <laughs> trying to grind through the COVID scenario and open a studio and all that jazz so there you go Wow, that's amazing. That's, that's an amazing long, story. <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm just, I can't oh. even imagine going through all that. Yeah, but, but it seems like a lot of it seems like a lot of it definitely was meant to happen to get you to where you are now. Yeah, yeah. And then, what was it like when COVID happened? You were like, "We're ready to go," and then it's like, <laughs> "What the hell? <laughs> what did you so, do?" Oh my God. I thought we were going to shut our doors before we opened them, you know? So we had, um, secured our lease a year prior. Um, so it took a year to do our build out. Um, and it was like a year to the day, I swear to you that we were going to open our doors. And so COVID hit and we weren't getting out of the lease. You know, there's no way around it. We were locked in. So, um, we just did the best that we could tap dancing around the restrictions, but I feel like we crushed it. Like we did the best that anybody possibly could. Um, and also like as soon as we could, people were thirsty to get out of their houses and thirsty for community again. And so they came to us, right? And and we provided that space. And I think that uh, if we could get through COVID, we could get through anything. And we well, did. I think it helped too that we also had built-in people that were you know, waiting impatiently to get in the door so I think having those people ready to go really helped us to succeed at that time too yeah, yeah. good point yeah our community was established we we were ready we were mobbing with a bunch of girls they just needed the space that's 100 percent true yeah we built our audience before we built our house <laughs> I remember we had some classes outside too because we wanted to start and they're like you can't be inside so we went to a parking lot and we just did neo burlesque in the parking yeah. lot yeah Wow, that's awesome. That just shows that there there could be a need anywhere and you just don't know until you try. Yeah. That's yeah, beautiful. yeah. I also love too like how you, you just started out doing like a lap dance class and then it ended up being like so much more like deeper meanings behind all of the things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you at... stand out compared to other studios and other places too, is that um We've really worked hard to create community and foster community. Uh, we're more, we always say we're more than just a dance class, which um, I know that other places don't have the same ethos as us, but we hang out inside and outside of the studio. Um, there's not like this hard boundary of you can't connect with any of these people outside these walls because um, we are very much communal and we're very much activists. Um, so people come in here knowing that there's like this mental health kind of ethos and philosophy without providing treatment we do not do body readings do not get it twisted <laughs> we are not therapists no <laughs> we will refer you out um but we will provide a space for you to disappear and we will sometimes though you know we provide a space for people to just break down and that's happened before too uh, because they feel safe here doing that sometimes it's ha you know it happens and it's kind of beautiful when that happens too um so we really push our ethos and um who we are as a community really hard and we and we um represent that as instructors um 
hundred percent. Every single new student that walks into the class, into the studio, they all hear our ethos. They all hear our rules, right? So that way it just sets the tone that we don't have to be the place for anybody. And if you're in here to talk shit and bond over degrading people, we're not the place for you. And that's okay. You know, um, the first rule of not saying anything negative about yourself is the hardest one for most of our students to follow because we say things about ourselves that we wouldn't say to other people, um, that you would never say to other people. So um, that's the hardest one. Um, and then rule number two is you can't talk shit on other people. And then the rules have evolved too. So our third rule is who you see in here, how they move in here and what they wear in here stays in here. So confidentiality, which is a mental health principle, right? So we have attorneys and doctors and police officers and tons of elementary school teachers, right? And so all you have to do is Google elementary school teacher fired for pole dancing, right? And it's happened. And so, you know, when people first walk in, they're nervous. We have a mortician, oh, I love her, <laughs> right? But she was terrified. She's like, do not tell anyone that I am here, right? Because of the stigma. And then as she's evolved, she's become more open with what she does for a living and stuff. But at first it can be scary for people to be, you know, associated with pole dancing. Um, and then our fourth rule is like, uh, that you can't compare yourself to anybody else because some people grew up with the privilege of movement in their lives, whether it's being able to afford dance classes or gymnastics or um, the privilege of having like these tiny little stick bodies that get upside down really well. Um, so we make sure that everybody knows that you're not allowed to compare yourself to anybody else in the room and that you're only allowed to compare yourself to who you were before you came through the door that day, you know? Um, so fostering that, I think step, you know, steps us, um, apart from other studios. Um, and I'm happy to provide it. We heard that there, uh, as I've evolved as a business owner too, I've heard that there's this philosophy called creating a third place. Um, and we didn't even know that we were doing that, but we were doing that, right? So a third place is people go to work and they go home and then they go to the studio, you know, and we've, we did it on accident, which is really amazing. <laughs> I love that. Creating a third place. I, I hadn't heard of that either. <laughs> mm -hmm. cool. It's like a business strategy. I don't have any business skills, uh, you know, but it's like, like a whole thing. Like there's business models on how to create a third place, third right? place, planning, third place strategies. Yeah. And we didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Cause it is like another destination. It's like, you know, it's not my home. It's kind of like my home, but <laughs> I also like work out here and find enrichment in other ways community yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. do you have any recommendations for other studios um because i love how you have your ethos and how you share it but how would you recommend to other studios to bring that positivity and mm -hmm. keep that mindset for a continuous space because as you know classes always change people come in and out um what would you recommend for others um, setting the tone with each and every new student. I think that's a, a key ingredient, but also my instructors emulate those um, personalities. So we've worked really hard to have badass instructors and it's been a struggle at sometimes. Um, but we, you know, like we're, we don't just talk about it and it's not a marketing gimmick. We are about it. Um, so we can't have people in there talking shit on other people or talking shit on their bodies if we're preaching that that's not what we do. So my instructors are just amazing. They're like the best support system. I'm so lucky to have the best, amazing staff and crew. And they emulate those mannerisms and they call people out on it too. When Susie's talking shit on her body, they'll call her out. What was that? What was that? You mean you're having um, a challenge, an obstacle that you're going to overcome and that we're going to help you overcome versus I suck. <laughs> you know, I can't do this. You mean you've met a badass challenge that we're going to work together on, you know? And so they call people out on it. Um, so I don't know, good luck, but get some badass instructors and make sure that they live that life too in the studio and emulate it. What else? Aspen, do you have anything? Um, I mean, I feel like our instructors are more like friends than instructors at times. You know, I still have students that'll send me videos of themselves I had a student that would send me videos of her um, weight loss journey wanting me to say you look so good and I refused to say that because I didn't want to force an opinion that weight loss meant you were awesome and so I would always just kind of ask you know how do you feel about what you see um, to 
change her mindset. So I think having those relationships in the studio and outside the studio and watching what you say, even outside the studio is really beneficial for your students too. And that's why they kind of keep coming back too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that, um, honestly. It makes yeah. me think. <laughs> right, right. It is all Always about like, learning. <laughs> like the language that you use too, because you know, we, we, it's really easy to put yourself down, but like if you turned it into, yeah. like you said, a, it was a challenge and, you know, like a goal to be achieved instead of like a detriment or whatever it would, whatever you said. Um, yeah. That is super life changing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's something, it's a mental health term called strengths-based teaching or like a strengths model. And it's like, no matter how difficult of a life or, you know, like effed up somebody is, they always have strengths, whether it's resiliency, overcoming obstacles, um, you know, whatever, there's always a strength. So finding those strengths and giving them, you know, vocalizing them, of course, like Aspen said, that's not based on body uh, appearances and stuff, right? Um, it's all mental health principles, but it's, people don't know it, <laughs> you know, like they don't know that this is a mental health philosophy and we're focusing on strengths and stuff, but it's true. And it's all based in evidence, you know, like the, there's a phrase called a little term called self-fulfilling prophecies, right. And that that's evidence-based there's science behind it. Just Google it, right. There's science behind the fact that if I believe that I can, odds are better that I will, right. Versus if I think that I can't good luck, sister, trying to overcome that you probably won't right? So it, just because I believe in myself doesn't mean I'm going to be successful, but it's scientifically proven that I have a higher chance of success if I change the negative dialogue in my head to positive, right? But it takes a lot of work. <laughs> you know, it's a lot easier to not be friends with anybody and not have them blow up my DMs, right? And Aspen's DMs and the other instructor's DMs, that's a lot easier. But I think that that's not, that's not what we're about as a community, but also that's not going to retain students, right? Um, I heard one time that um, when people are struggling with finances, the first thing they cut is a gym membership, right? It's, a, it's an expendable thing that they can cut when you're providing soul food, right? And that nourishment that people need, sensuality is something that I, I believe a lot of people need. Um, community, they need, they're not going to cut it, you know? So it's a lot of work, um, but I wouldn't do anything else. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yes. Mm -hmm. You just reminded me that there was a student who, she was like, I've never been in a place where someone would just shout out how beautiful everyone was. Like, and that really like made me, you know, think about it too, because like everyone comes from such different backgrounds, but then, you know, the whole studio we were so positive and, and uplifting. It's such a different feeling for a lot of people and and they're like wait where am I and then it makes yeah. them feel okay to like you know express that and maybe see that in themselves as well and see that in others and um it's yeah. life-changing and um yeah yeah, yeah. I don't like to say that pole, pole dance will change your <laughs> life but it usually does <laughs> yeah yeah but um you're right um Fallon when you say that it takes a lot of work when I started teaching it was really hard to learn how to say the right things, um, not the right things, but like the correct things to put people in the correct hand space when they're feeling like a failure, how it was hard for me if I didn't get the trick while I was showing it so that I put myself down. So it was a constant work and I learned that with time, like you said, if you continue to stay positive, it really does change everything. It helps them connect the pieces. It helps them feel better about themselves. It helps them when they come in and it's a bad day, they can say, oh, it's just an off day. I'll get it next time. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of people understand how much work it takes. It's a constant daily process of every class, like really focusing that positive energy. Right. Right. And I was going to ask like how you would form like such an awesome, amazing team, but it seems like you all just kind of gravitated together and that's yeah. the way it works. <laughs> so there's no, I think every single we could follow on our team except for one was a student first. Is that right? Ask them. Leandra wasn't a student first. Correct. Right. So we definitely like Oh, I don't want to use the word groomed because that's gross. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> we definitely 
like you, you could tell if people are about it or they're not as students, right? Like if they're all in and if they're the ones that are calling other people out and redirecting their negative self-talk and it's a student doing that to somebody else, right? Then that's amazing. And then there's ones that are thirsty. So um, we, they just like pop up, like that person would make an amazing instructor and then they do. So that's what we did. But we, um, we started training though, um, I had a handful of people that we started training before we opened the brick and mortar. Aspen was one of them um, to just make sure I had a solid set of instructors before we opened the doors because of, you know, teaching dance takes a toll on your body and I can only teach so many classes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But my instructors aren't going anywhere. Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. too funny I love that you had it all planned out right before I did it um, did it make it easier the transition what do you mean the transition for what like when you eventually got the brick and mortar because you had worked with them I know sometimes a lot of people will start studios from what we've heard and then they're looking for instructors as the studio opens was it easier that you planned it out and you really took the time to kind of absolutely think about it? I was teaching at other facilities and so I got to learn off of their dollars instead of mine. <laughs> like <laughs> what works, what doesn't work, business management, so on and so forth. And I wasn't financially invested in it, but they were, <laughs> you know, so that was cool. I was, you know, as a student, I was taking notes. I knew one day I would open a dance studio. Like as a little girl, I knew I was going to open a dance studio. And so all the dance studios that I went in, I was just taking notes of what works and what doesn't. Um, and I absolutely am blessed to have built an audience before we open our doors. I have no tips on how to do it any other way because when our doors opened, they were flooded with people, right? So, but that, that building of that audience was five years in the making, you know what I mean? So before um, I moved to Michigan though, and I think that it was probably a year and a half or two years Aspen would probably know better than me because I suck at dates, but a year and a half or two years before we opened the studio. So we had that, at least that period of time to build our audience. And I would say it's definitely easier. Who wouldn't want to open your doors and have people flood in versus trickle? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And do you do any online classes at all or did you do them during COVID? And Yeah, all of our classes are available online. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we do have, I teach a fun class um, that's trademarked, so you can't steal it, <laughs> called Booze and Butts, <laughs> uh, which is a totally, that was an accident too, right? Total accident, but it's freaking popping. Um, that one we can't do virtually because it's it would be too tricky. We aren't offering that virtually yet. <laughs> like, would you like to tell was, us what is in the Booze and Butts? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um. It's, you know, like there was the TikTok trend of people like doing their ass paintings where they paint their butts and they'd sit on a canvas. Cool. Um, but I have like, I'm a very artistic person. I come from a very artistic family. So when I was seeing these butt paintings, I was like, that's cool, but they could be glorious. They could be so much better. Right. And so again, on accident, I'm like, yo, you guys want to come paint asses, right? <laughs> and they're like, yes. And then it sells out every single time it sells out. But I'm not going to tell you the tips and the tricks because our ass paintings are better than everybody else's ass paintings and they're more majestic for sure. And I also sell them as well. Um, so I'll show them when I give you the studio tour. They're amazing. And I'll describe them for the audience that's listening as well. Um, but they're pretty freaking badass. <laughs> oh, MJ, that sounds like so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that you use the word majestic to describe them as well. <laughs> They are. <laughs> oh I can't wait to see them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my, be... I've never had a re reason to go out to Michigan, but that would be one hell of a class. Mm, to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I made my husband do it once. It was pretty funny. We called it orbs. Because <laughs> ah. <laughs> it was a butt with orbs dangling from it. It was pretty good. We oh. sold that at an auction. Somebody bought it. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> a whole other career. <laughs> when I'm Basic. old, I'm going to sell ass painting still for sure. They'll just be like, yeah. like wrinkly on the edges. 
I'll turn him into something majestic, I promise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It makes it more fun for the community um, to show that not only are we pole dance, but we do other forms of art. There's so much ways to have fun. That's amazing. <laughs> Lots of ways right. to celebrate. Right. <laughs> like, I was just about to say like a dumb pun, but you guys don't half-ass anything. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> Too funny. <laughs> oh, but that'd be a good idea for an ass painting, just half an ass. What? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Do you have um morning? She's ready to go. I love it. <laughs> or, or what are your what is your schedule like? What kind of types of other classes do you teach? We have mostly evening classes, but um, Aspen teaches classes on Sundays during the day. And I have some classes on Tuesdays during the day for shift workers and stay at home moms and stuff. Um, but most of them are evenings. Mm -hmm. We have what? Pole dancing. So it will pull. It's just called pole, right? And we have levels one, two, three, and four. Was defined by expert levels. Um, we're all, most of us are all certified expert instructors. So one, two, three, and four as defined by their levels. Um, burlesque, I teach that class. Right now we're doing our lap dance class. Uh, so every year we do it for six weeks to kind of pay tribute to where it's, where we started and it's freaking packed. And then um, turn up, which is like a cardio dance fitness. We have strong nation, which is like high intensity interval training, get your ass kicked dance fitness. I don't even know if you'd call it dancing. Just let's murder you for half an hour. It's awesome. <laughs> um, we have belly dancing, liquid motion. What else, Aspen? Exotic burn. Exotic burn. Mm -hmm. That's probably all of them. And how many of these may I ask are online? All of them. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, all of them. We haven't had anybody take level four virtually yet, but I'm down for it. I'm, oh my goodness. It's hard to find a level four virtually. I have been looking yeah, for one. Yeah, if you find somebody else <laughs> two, I'm down for it. <laughs> I've been trying to find a, like, let's do a shameless ask for help. If anybody will teach advanced pullers level four, more than level four, please get a hold of me to book so I can book a private <laughs> lesson. And maybe we could do a group lesson. Chris. Yes. And then, and then yes. <laughs> right. I'm like, goes to sign up for class. Yes. You're too funny. It's hard when you get so advanced to find places that'll teach you when you're not right. in a giant. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And even like the certification, like I just did the expert three and four, and only that teaches you so much. Um right. It doesn't teach you like the Janeiro, all the different things like that. Yeah, where do you go to for that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let us know. Reach out to us. Yeah. <laughs> Link in bio. <laughs> oh my God, level and liquid motion. I always wanted to take that. Yeah, me too. And exotic burn. I mean, exotic right. I was burn. gonna ask about that one because I I find that intriguing because I feel like. Um, all the exotic classes are always like burn anyway, but this one is actual burn. <laughs> it's trademark, yes, trademark exotic burn. That's from, awesome. Um, the hurricane, yeah. She well, it's ah. Amber Wolf that teaches it, but it's uh, facilitated oh, by okay. Clayton certifications. It's amazing. It's like paying tribute wow. to the girls in the clubs and moving. So it's different than liquid motion. Liquid oh, motion okay. is, I think, more internally based in a lot of ways. And correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not certified in liquid. Um, but it, an exotic burn is more in your face, aggressively, like mm -hmm. clacky, nasty, dirty. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> I would love that. Cool, because she really pays a lot of <laughs> tribute and homage to the entertainers and makes sure that uh, they, you know, get that credit for creating that style of movement, which I think mm. is wonderful. Mm -hmm. yes. Are you the same time zone as us? We're four thirty-two here. Yep. No. Oh, really? You are in the same time zone. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Cool. Guys? So that's even We're easier for us to take class. <laughs> You're We're in, in Springfield, Ma Springfield, Massachusetts. Ah, very cool. <laughs> About an hour and a half from Boston. Mm. Cool. <laughs>
Alan, we did forget to mention that we have booty yoga too. Oh yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Booty <laughs> yoga. B U T I. Yeah. Uh, booty. Mm -hmm. May I ask what that? Yoga, I mean, obviously that focuses like, on booty. Flex and pulse and hold like uh, moves and flex and pulse and these moves and it kicks your ass too. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. So many classes I haven't heard of, but they're online, that which I think like is time. so awesome because then we can all try you know, different classes and different instructors without leaving the vicinity because um, it's expensive to do that. But yeah, Absolutely. hopefully other studios will hear this and get yourselves online. Yes. <laughs> or, or don't get, or don't get online and let us all get on the online business. Like our Yes, don't get online and <laughs> them our way. Uh -huh. <laughs> Out of our way. No, I support and empower all studios too, but I'll take them. <laughs> too funny. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we'll put all the links to attend your online classes below, of course. Um, and you. all that good stuff. And any and do you have any upcoming things to promote that are coming up? We do. Let's see. Yes. I read right. they have January 29th, but I don't know if this will air by then. Oh yeah, this oh. will be I think this is probably after no. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Skip that. At some point then we will offer <laughs> another pull silks class which i'm oh. really geeking out about um i love the pull it's my baby it's my favorite thing but i'm really falling more in love even more in love with pull silks um because i feel like i'm getting old <laughs> i work out so many hours a day and um so merging the silks with the pole it's i feel like i said it's like where pullers go to retire is to pull silks because it's less um in a lot of ways it's easier on your body and your joints you know because our shoulders just get so destroyed mine do at least um so it's a lot easier in that sense um but it allows you to move in such a broader um repertoire of moves compared to just the pull um, and it's really nice for anybody that's starting on the pull because it's like a built-in spotter so there's no way, like, so we teach a work, a six week series and, um, everybody inverts by week five, hundred percent inverts by week five. So that's really cool. Cause then you get used to flying upside down. Um, and you can't fall out unless you like crawl out in which case then fall because you did that to yourself. Right. But like, you can't fall out. Um, so it gets people used to being upside down, which is a fear that some students have. And then also it gets your muscle memory squared away. Like, so say you want to do Aisha's, right? You can do all really fine tune where your hands go on the pole um, to really like nail that Aisha without dying, falling off, whatever, right? So your ass is in the silks and then you can really drill that grip. Um, so we offer those. Um, about once every quarter and people can totally attend virtually. If you're listening now, you probably have a poll, just throw some silks on it. Um, and then we can teach that, which is amazing. A lot of fun. And then I just um, got asked to be on the uh, panel with, so I merged with pretty girls poll and poll poised. Um, and they're having a workshop it's like every Sunday in the month of March for potential studio owners. And it's called Operate and Own a Studio Like a Boss. And so they're going to have different speakers each um, Sunday that talk about what they've done to open their studios. And then it ends with a Q&A. So they talk about their niche, you know, like what we're kind of talking about now, and then ends with a Q&A for anybody who has a dream and aspirations of opening a pole studio. And then um, in September, we're offering an intermediate certification through Pretty Girls Poll. So that'll be cool because I've only done expert. Um, and I'm really kind of pumped about that to see what another, you know, like you were talking about, Chris, that like, all I know is that that's all they teach, you know, like, I'm hoping to add more skills under our belt belt for that. But then also Pretty Girls Poll really dives in on how to focus a lot on your social media and marketing, as well as keeping and retaining students. So that's something that you don't really take classes on as instructors that I've found. I haven't found those resources necessarily. And so I'm really pumped that um, Pretty Girls Poll has merged that into their curriculum. So that's what we have up and coming. Did I miss anything else, Aspen? I mean, you can always talk about my silhouette workshop coming up. How about you talk about it? 
okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's an hour and a half workshop where I'll teach people how to, it's like a little routine in the routine. They're going to take off their um, underwear that they're going to wear over their pants if they choose to, and then um, a button up shirt. And so then after they learn the routine, we'll put up a screen and then I'll either have an image projected on there or just the really deep, dark red, and then they'll record it um, on their phone as they do it. And then they'll have that for themselves or if they want to give it to their partner for Valentine's Day. And so I usually do it around Valentine's Day. Last year we did a couples theme. So we had um, couples do it and they had a blast. Um, I did a Christmas one this year, which was pretty cool. And that's on my Instagram. And so it's a lot of fun. We have that on February Boards, I think. Okay. Yes. February 4th. February 4th. Mm -hmm. That sounds like so much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah. I think that's then, one thing that our studio, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's one thing that our studio does for marketing too, that other people can totally tap into if they want to like increase their, well, potentially free marketing is we really do a lot of content creation classes. Um, so like Aspen silhouette one is a great for content creation. That's all they're not all Aspen. Oh, I did not mean that, but like they bring their phones and what they're doing is they're creating content, right? So they can share that with their partner, but usually what happens is it gets posted on their socials. Right. Um, and then, um, I did a workshop that was paint pouring. It was badass. Nobody's ever seen it before find it on my Instagram. It was amazing. And all it was, again, was content creation. Like, let's make a badass visual arts video of this amazing thing that we're going to create with our bodies because I merged my two things together, paint and bodies, right? Um, and so then what happens? The students post it on their socials. Hey, right? Then it's free marketing for us. So then not only do we reach our circle, but we reach all of their circles too. And then they bring us their masses. So we really focus a lot on free marketing, which is content creation classes. And we encourage our students to bring in their cameras all the time when we're um, on the polls, because then they get to see their form, but also they edit it and then they post it on their socials. Mm-hmm. I love yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> You're just right. We're having our first content creation party. Um, we're calling them art and movement jams, but it's going to be um, two hours where you come create art in a theme. And this month's theme is googly eyes. So we're all just going to come in and like decorate ourselves in the studio <laughs> with googly eyes Amazing. and create choreo. I don't know, but content. Yeah. Amazing. We have the giant ones that you can put on your butt and we have oh yeah. Yes. We got glow yes. in the dark ones and everything. Amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that that's kind of where I see things headed is a lot right. of yeah. Yeah, want to get to... clout, right? They want to get social media clout, so we can help you do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. Everybody's trying to make money online now. <laughs> right. So everyone's like, I'm bored with your Aisha. What else can you do? rude <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to do it anymore they just want to create content which is right fine. that's fine oh. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> does your studio do uh performances we do we do indeed so we do um two performances a year and we host them here in the studio um we have one popping off march 18th so it's just around the corner and that's our fetish and fantasy masquerade ball. That's considered our elite performers. So they audition, cuts are made. It's mostly a lot of instructors um, and it gets nasty. We're all about getting nasty. So it's fetish and fantasy. So we get dirty, we get raunchy. We have to keep some of our clothes on, you know, cause you gotta get like, there's rules for that. But one step away from taking your clothes off it's pretty cool. And then um, we do a student showcase every October and that's our carnival, creepy carnival performance. So anybody can perform in that show. It doesn't matter how long they've been um, in the studio. If they've been in a month, as long as they have something put together, then we um, host that performance for them too. And then of course we've done things in the community as well. So um, Aspen choreographed a routine for Pride. We're really involved um, in all of our community resources. I was actually um, on the chair for our Branch County Pride. And then Aspen um, choreographed a badass pride routine. Um, and then we've performed like a local bars 
What else? We're probably performing at PolCon. We're just seeing if we made the cut. So put out that good juju. Message Colleen and say, tell him to make the cut. <laughs> I didn't know Polkarn you had to like audition like that that's crazy yeah you have to submit videos actually the videos if anybody's thinking about doing Polkarn the videos are uh, due for submission um by January 15th so you got oh, a couple wow. of days. but if you have something that you've already performed with or you know like a, a routine that you've already done just submit that video real quick but you have to submit videos I think that um I don't know how many cuts they make but I think it's the same kind of philosophy that we have we just got to make sure you have something put together you know mm -hmm. um and then you can submit to teach and so on and so forth. But Colleen did a really good job, does a really good job of making sure that each of the, um, what I'm thinking of, Aspen. Showcases. Showcases are curated by um, people who represent that community, which is really amazing. She's really inclusive and really works actively to be inclusive. Um, so yeah, whatever. Shout out to Colleen. Good job, Colleen, on your <laughs> Yes. And mm -hmm. we were talking about going this year because it's in Washington, D.C. Yeah. and it's pretty close to us this time. But I don't know um, if we're going to be able to make it. <laughs> and we yeah. talked about it, but maybe in the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Chris, you're on mute. <laughs> well, speaking of um, showcases, you Somewhere. have them in, in your studio. Uh, or sorry, I was going to ask, did you have them in your studio, the showcases? I do. Yeah, we do. Oh, wow. How, um, we'll go into the studio tour. Um, how many poles do you have? I have eight. Well, we have nine. One goes up and down on the other side of the studio for private lessons. We have nine, but eight are permanent. Wow. And then are wow. they, are, uh, X pole? What kind of poles are they? Oh, really? Yeah. Do you yeah, like I them? I love yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Lupit's customer service. I think that they are far superior. And um, our poles have their quick lock system, which the poles that I used in Oregon were the ex, I don't want, they were the expert ones. And so when you spin on them, sometimes it'll lock the mechanism. Um, so I played with those for a while and then I got Lupit and I think that they're just phenomenal. I highly recommend their studio poles. For sure. And their pressure mounted poles are great too. They have the quick lock system for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that they had a quick lock system. Yeah. Cause when, it, when I first used a loop, it, it had the hex key screw right. and it was really thin and it kept breaking. Right. Um, but that's good that they have a different one. <laughs> I'm looking to get uh, some new poles and I don't know um, where to go, which one to go for it. I vote loop it. Yeah. You'll get them, you'll get them way faster too. Yeah. And their customer service, they're, they're just mm. so amazing. <laughs> they're just so uh. amazing. Super prompt, responsive. And I've had no issues with my polls at uh. all. That's good yeah, to know. Thank it. you for sharing that. Yeah. And then are your polls stainless steel or what finish are they? Yeah. Do you have a different types of finish? All stainless no, steel. Stainless steel, 45 millimeter. Yeah. Oh, 45 millimeter. That was my yeah. other one. And then how tall are they? Uh, they range in height because oh, uh, that's we're, on the, cool. we're on the third floor, we're right downtown in this historical downtown district. And we're on the third floor of a building. Mm -hmm. And since we're on the third floor of this really old historical building, the roof is a little bit slanted for runoff, oh. right? So I had to measure every single pole individually because where they were based in the studio, they had all different heights. So our highest pole is 11 and a half feet. They're not super high, but we're not necessarily teaching 400 level four polars either that want to tumble even though aspen really wants to tumble and she can't but there's so many I, other things I you can do. do with the shorter poles and that's cool that they're all different sizes too yeah. yeah i know i can't wait to see that i do have a question um about your sh the showcases and your studio space did you have issues because i know our studio we had issues with music licensing and holding showcases i haven't been triggered for music licensing yet you're so lucky they finally <laughs> found keep us. your mouth shut people keep putting it over my head and i haven't been flagged yet so we i don't know how they found us lot. yeah and it, it was like four <laughs> years and then i got the email and i was like ignore uh -huh ignore and then they're like oh we're going to sue you and I was like all right 
you know, Archer told me the same thing was going to happen. Yeah, I would, yeah, just stay under the radar until, you know, mm -hmm. but then there's a, there's a license for having your classes. And then there's another one if you want to have performances. So, That's just you so know, crazy. yeah, it's oh ridiculous. God. That's rude. It's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can't even post it on Instagram anyway. So I don't know, like, what is this for? I don't yeah. know. How, how do they flag you? I actually have no idea. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out, but I don't know. I listen to a lot of music. How do they know it's in a studio and not at my house? Right? That's why I don't, I have no idea. Right? We're so small. I, I thought for sure we'd be like, fine. <laughs> when you told me, I was like, are they on our social media? Like, are they checking our posts? And are like, I don't understand how they wouldn't know. Yeah. And they even had like our old information because we we changed our business entity um, two years after we opened and they had our previous. So it was like almost like they had to catch up because um, I was like, oh, you have the wrong identity on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not signing that. <laughs> nope, not me. Doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. oh but yeah showcases I really love showcases we were talking about it earlier too because um, unlike competitions you can like really be yourself um, right. so that's awesome that you offer showcases especially to um, students of all I levels agree. yep yeah I agree yep. <laughs> I'm excited okay. for this tour I, I know I want to see ready <laughs> you want to go right yeah. now yeah we start yeah. with like all the wonderful shoes you have behind I was just about to say that. Descriptive, <laughs> very descriptive for people listening, right? Yes. That watching. So behind the gorgeous Fallon La Femme, who's sitting in a white throne, <laughs> is a wall that's covered in rose gold glitter and like 20, 25 pairs of shoes. Because I was trying to find a way to display them because they're my babies. I definitely have a shoe fetish. <laughs> I love them so much like behind me because it makes me feel like a boss and so my office is meant to feel like a boss and so I show and so I did <laughs> I'm gonna walk to one spot so I can start the tour yeah, very specific location I'm walking Ooh, look you can see a little bit of butts little butt teaser back there oh yeah that would look like a cactus but it's a butt I haven't got there I know, yet. I saw a bunch of this Listen, I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you the tour as if like you're a student walking in. Here we go. This is our studio. I'm on a laptop so I can't see what you see. We have a pink tufted couch and we have our photos that are all black and white of various instructors. We have our all gender restroom. We try to have signs of inclusion um, everywhere. So we're in our lobby. It's a, like a merger of industrial and glam. Right. So we have I like the walls. Yeah, chandeliers everywhere. And like, I don't even know what that stuff's called. It's, cool. it's like a metal. metal? <laughs> yeah, it is metal. That's it's like cool. And then this is our beautiful bathroom. Let's see. So again, chandelier. chandelier. The chandelier and the mm -hmm. is those feathers. Yep. Wow. I'm that stuck on that dark. thing. Yeah. Oh, and gee, that's <laughs> all of our mirrors have different motivational quotes of people who we've been inspired by. So this one is from Beyonce, and it says, "The most alluring thing a woman can have is confidence." So when you're looking at yourself in the yeah. mirror, it's some positive affirmations. I love that so much. Love it. Do do, and we're walking into our dressing room area. We have three dressing rooms. Oh, that's awesome! Do -do -do. I love the color scheme too. It's like a light blue gray. Yeah, and then on each Beautiful. of the mirrors in the um, dressing rooms, more positive affirmations. So when you look, again look at yourself in the mirror, you just think positive stuff. And then of course we call this the shit show, right? Where <laughs> the and other side. Our studio. Wow. It's so gorgeous. Thank you. We started I with this this spot only. 
So um, we have like a bare area here where we were doing like burlesque and our other movement classes. And then um, on the other side, as we walk further, we have our eight poles, our chandeliers throughout with crowns that we've earned for various things on each of the chandeliers. And then um, we have the three windows that overlook downtown. Well, they did, but then creepy dudes kept looking in the windows. And so we had to put up sticky stuff to block out the douchey dudes. Come on, guys. <laughs> and we even gave them our cash app and they weren't doing anything. It was oh my rude. God. Rude. We had to do something like that at ours too. They just stand out there on their phones, not looking in. <laughs> and there's our silk. I displayed it for you guys because I think it's beautiful. We have enough for each pole, of course. It is beautiful. That. I'll show you the sticky stuff that we put on because it's kind of pretty. Can you guys see it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's glittery, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of stained glassy a little bit, but it still lets the light in. If anybody's thinking yeah. about like privacy stuff, other studios, um, you know, still lets the light in, still looks like a window. It doesn't look like, mm -hmm. you know, newspaper or anything like that. It's still pretty yeah. but it's not in anymore. And from the outside, um, it's a really pretty because it shoots rainbows outside so then after our first year and a half we had it spanned um so we opened we got the other half of the studio and this one is all open space for movement classes so i just want to do like grand jetés across the studio. you can come to me i'll let you do it Mm -hmm. and then doo -doo -doo. i love the lips and the logo <laughs> i hand painted that it was a nightmare wow. i know i was gonna be like what that was not a butt painting was it no <laughs> 30 hours and here we go here's our glorious booze and butts i'm gonna tell you the names this one is called just peachy that's my ass as a peach that one sold out the classes. This one is called the Bum Day Sunday, right? So it's a pink ass and it has um, cherry. <laughs> 3D sprinkles on the I milk love it. cream Ooh, and a texture. texture. I love texture. And then we have cactus. Mm -hmm, which is my ass in a pot <laughs> and that's actually my boob <laughs> they totally I took a on this and they pulled out their boobs and painted them to make a bulb on top <gasps> yeah 100 <laughs> and then this one I did not do a workshop on because it was so hard this is called moons over my hammy <laughs> my ass is a ham and there's a cracked egg on top mm-hmm this is the original. I can't remember what this one was called. This was the one that started it all. Ooh, it looks like a starry night. <laughs> yeah, really pretty and covered in glitter. And then this one was inspired by Don Curry because when he came to take our photos, he said that I had to do one based off of this ugly sweater that he had. And so he sent me a photo of it. It's majestic. I love it. It's called Jingleberries. So it's my ass as a deer's ass, like a white tail's ass, and then attached are three dimensional dingleberries. Cheers. Uh huh. And then last but not least, we have the pumpkin spice acidino <laughs> for the fall. So it's my ass as a pumpkin, and then it has like some cinnamon whip on top with some cinnamon sticks. So we've taken the TikTok trend and turn it, turned it into something magnificent. So amazing. Oh, gee. You can purchase so anything amazing. too. Do you, I will sell you my ass. Do you get inspired after you make the ass print or do you like, do you like come up with it before you, you People make give the me ass? ideas now and then I run with it if the idea is cool. So like the ham one was my husband's idea. Um, the other ones, I think we're all me, but I can only do like, so the number one sellers are a glitter one. That's the number one seller. 
the cactus was a huge seller too, but the glitter one, everybody wants the glitter ass. And I can only have so many ass paintings covered in glitter. So I, um, whenever I teach, then I print my ass and then I'll take it home and I'll just take it and run with it. And then here, this is kind of a new thing that I situated. It's kind of ratchet looking, but it's um, all of like our awards and accomplishments and like feel good things for if you're ever doubting you know, sometimes being a studio owner or an instructor is hard because you have to like have uncomfortable conversations sometimes too. And you're like, man, this kind of sucks to own a business right now or to be an instructor right now. Um, this is kind of an area where we can say, and we're doing really cool shit, you know? So our studio, um, we opened in, what was it? July. And then six months later, our community has like a poll and everybody votes for the best of things in the community. And so we've won the best school of dance for three years in a row. And we won it six months after we opened, which is amazing. So we're competing, I guess, competing against like all the dance schools in the area, even like the little kids ask. classes and whatever. And we won three years in a row and we haven't even been open three years. <laughs> you know, like this July is three years, um, but we've won three times in a row, which is pretty amazing. And then we're very involved in the community. So we're in the parades. Um, when, you know, go parading down the street, we do these epic floats. And um, every time we've entered, we've won as well for that. Um, so we've just accomplished a lot of really amazing things. And that's kind of a place to capture it and remember it. I love that. You're right, though. It is hard being a studio owner. It's nice to have that little sanctuary of like, oh, yeah, wait. <laughs> there's a little whole bunch of people on my side and I'm you know it's fine <laughs> oh, such, thank you for sharing such that an incredible journey Ra. Thanks. I'm just thinking about it you truly are doing incredible things parades OMG. right it was important right. for us to really be involved with the community because you know we've heard and I imagine other studio owners um have experiences where the community isn't behind them still due to the stupid stigma even though polls been around for so long now um and i you know experienced that listening to some of my peers and so it was really important for us to take an active stance with our community to really have um interactive and supportive relationships with all the other business owners as well as like our downtown development committee and you know the mayor and all that stuff and so we've worked really really hard to foster that and they love us <laughs> awesome right because you stood out amongst all the other dance studios and that's a really hard thing to do especially yes. with the stigma and everything yeah so when you say an active stance for other studio owners you actually went out to make those connections and meet those people emailed them and all that yeah so um I make connections with all the other local studio owners but there's committees right so there's like the downtown development committee it's a committee for us down here. And it's like, let's, uh, they get grants and funding um, for different things. So they're like, hey, um, what do you guys think needs to happen in downtown? And then everybody votes on it and then they all get funds if they vote on it, stuff like that. So um, once I opened up, it was important for me to introduce myself to them. There's a local Altrusa community. So that's just a bunch of boss ass women that come together and they make changes in our community. And so it's important for me to go in there and say, this is who we are. This is what we stand for. And I do a lot of work to um, battle the stigma proactively. So I talk a lot about the mental health part of things. Um, you know, we have a ton of trauma survivors in the poll community. And I don't think people talk about that as much. And I, my mental health brain goes into the whys of it, right? And I think if we, it would be unethical, but if we pulled the poll community and like a gym, I think that you would have more trauma, sexual trauma survivors in the poll community and in, in, in sensual movement studios than you would at an average gym. And so I'm like, why is that, right? Because we're creating a safe space for you to be sexy because sometimes being sexy can be scary especially if your body was taken away from you right and so i actively talk about those experiences and that we provide a sanctuary where people can feel safe being sexy again right and so that kind of speaks to an emotional level and i don't want to say it takes the stigma away but it 
I think can provide an alternate mode of thinking about what we do as an art and as a community. Um, so as often as I can, if there's a community opportunity, we try to get involved with it, right? They have some committee right now that they just put together where they want members of the community. They're creating a group of 12 people that are going to tour all the local facilities and they're like, I don't know, the power plant and like the downtown, like wherever the mayor lives, whatever that building is called, <laughs> right? The mayor and all those other fancy people and like learning about the operations behind the scenes of what it takes to run our community, right? And so they were looking for people to be involved with that. And so I signed up. Why? Not so much because I care too much about how those operations work, but it's more about the networking part of things, right? So I can work on developing relationships with these people who make decisions in our community um, and talk about the behind the scenes things of what we do and how it's more than just dancing sensually, even though it's all about that too, that they can both live in the same world. Any other things, Aspen, that we do actively to engage in the community that I missed? No, I mean, we do try to offer some classes that are not specifically geared towards that as well. Um, we've done children workshops where we taught them belly dancing and stuff like that with their parent. Um, we've done um, pictures with Santa with the family. And so we did it on the side that didn't have the pole. That way we were bringing people in so they could kind of see and meet us and see that we're just normal humans like they are. Um, I do think that networking is really important though. I had a student that came in who said their therapist actually suggested that they come to us because we had made those networks and they saw that we were more than just that. And she really opened up in there. And so I think that's really valuable to make those connections for our students as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. Um, networking, I really never put too much thought into it. I don't know about yourself, Mandy. I, I mean, I think we've talked about it, but to know that you really have to take that active stand and mm -hmm. make the connections, it really affirms. Yeah, things need to happen. I think it depends <laughs> on your community if there's a need for that too, right? So I was, my poll journey started in San Diego. There's no need for me to go out and advocate for like the validity of poll in San Diego because they're so liberal and open-minded already, but we live in a very small town that I think some could define as being conservative. So I think it just mm -hmm. depends on your population if you need to take an active stance, but the networking part of things has paid off because like we, um, we raised, it, we didn't raise money. Um, we got a hold of our local domestic violence shelter and asked what needs they had, right? Because we're activists. Wow. That's one of our values as a studio is how can we be activists? And to be an activist, I say you have to actively be doing shit, right? <laughs> you got to like actually do shit to like change the world a little bit or try, right? So we reached out to them and asked what needs they had because we didn't know what needs they had and we wanted to be activists. And they said that they wanted little purses and bags that were nice that women could wear to job interviews with like some jewelry in it so that when they're they finally got a job interview they got this purse and it was like now you can feel fancy and go to your job interview right and where did it come from it came from our studio right because we see you and and we want to be involved and then now fast forward a couple years um the whole entire uh dv nonprofit came to our studio for their um, Christmas party. And so they did like one of our, our parties, like kind of like bachelorette parties, but it was like their Christmas party. They all came here and it was really cool. And we talked about the history of pole and of twerking because they took my twerk classes. Um, and it kind of came around full circle because we supported them and they supported us, you know? So being involved in the community means that I have a bunch of allies and people that will advocate and challenge other people's thought processes when they're talking shit about the stigma about pole. And they can say, well, did you know that pole dancing actually started like in the circus in the 1920s? Did you know that twerking has been around forever and started in Africa and it's just a way of moving that it's not that dirty? You know, like, so the more people that know our story and know about what it is that we stand for and what our values are those are the people that can go challenge thought processes outside of here too i think. I, 
I really appreciate this conversation too, because I think it's important for, um, you know, studio owners to talk about these things too, because I know from my background, I'm just a dancer and I have no like business <laughs> sense or anything like that. And I, you know, often think of like how I can reach out into the community, yeah. but you don't really know how to do that. But you've listed some really uh, approachable ways that, wow. that we all can do um, mm -hmm. in our community. And also not even just to like, you know, spread, spread goodness in the world, of course, but to also like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Great relationships. Um, We've done yeah, Toys yeah. for Tots too. Um, and then again, wow. you were always at Pride. We always make a scene there, not a scene, but kind of, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other outreach kind of things that we've done. Oh, and then um, we've raised tons of food two years in a row. Um, so since I am kind of connected with the mental health network here last, um, what was it, November, we had a social worker that reached out to me and she said, hey, we have two families. No, I'm sorry, 14 families um, in our school alone that don't have food for the holidays for Thanksgiving um, because a lot of children are food insecure and their meals they get from school. So on the weekends, they don't eat, right? So when we're talking about a two-week break or a one-week break, that's danger zone for a lot of these kids. So she reached out to me and she was like, do you think the studio can do anything? And hell yeah, we did, right? So we hooked them all up. They all got all their food and it was a feast and it was amazing. Why did that social worker reach out to me? Because I networked, because I had those relationships and what a cool opportunity for us to say, hey, we did this, you know, so. You're amazing, <laughs> your, <laughs> your, your studio. Thank, thank you for being in existence. And for also, cause you said you have some classes for like um, to help studio owners. Did you mention that earlier? So I um, we connected with up. Pretty Girls Poll. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's yeah. dropping soon. Um, the link for purchasing tickets for that is January 15th. I don't know how much it costs yet. This is my first year doing it. Actually, okay. it's, and it's their second year doing it. The first year they did it, they didn't know if there was going to be an interest and it freaking sold out like yeah. huge. So <laughs> um, just kind of maybe stock them and stock my socials too for when that drops. Um, mm. Because you can tune in live and watch and then be involved in the Q and A and it's a different studio owner each time. Um, or, but then of course you can also get the recordings too, to learn and you don't just put it on in the background as you're cleaning your studio, get other people's skills, you know, and steal their shit unless it's trademarked like my booze and butts, which you cannot <laughs> steal because I will come back for you. Do not get it twisted. How do you how do you trademark something? Because I want to trademark oh, my Listen, wow. you need to get it trademarked. Let's talk about that real quick. Listen, yeah, if there please. is something, if there is a brand, so Studio La Femme, somebody was like, hey, you need to get that trademarked. And this was how many years ago? Eight years ago. And I was like, whatever, nobody's going to steal my shit. Hello, a disgruntled former student, 100% opened up a Studio La Femme in Oregon right after I left because she was pissed, right? 100% trademark infringement, federal trademark infringement. So do, 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 do. it happened, right? And it was from somebody that, you know, like she hated me for whatever reason, I know what reasons, but silly. And she was kind of in a dark place. And so she did it. And she was 100% trying to own Studio La Femme in Oregon. And there would have been nothing that I could have done about it had I not had a federal trademark. It's really easy get your notepad out. It's USPTO. Hang on, let me shut this door real quick. USPTO, like maybe US Patent and Trademark Organization or some shit, but it's USPTO, probably .gov, but just Google it. But listen to me completely before you do it. And then you go in and you search to see if your trademark already exists. Um, and if it doesn't, then you can apply for a trademark. It usually costs $500 to get a trademark and it lasts so many years. I'm not sure how many years. I honestly don't have a clue how many years it lasts. And it's a very, very long process. So you submit, you fill out this stuff, you file for your trademark. And then it honestly takes about a year for your trademark to get approved, but nobody can steal your trademark in that year. So you have to say, I started doing business as this name at such and such a date and you have to prove it so you have to show like your website and this is when it was established and so on and so forth that way nobody can steal your shit still as you're waiting right but then 
if you haven't done so already, you need to secure your website domain name first before you apply for your trademark. So that's what I didn't do. Um, I applied for my trademark first and I had looked at my domain name as like studiolfm.com, right? And it was like, I don't know, 20 bucks a month or some shit like that. Um, and then, but I just didn't secure it because I was still like a work in progress. Once I applied for my trademark, it clues all of like the domain host people that own all those that, because of course now you want a domain name, right? And so my domain name now is three grand. So if I would have secured it before I filed for my trademark, then I could have locked it in at $20 a month. So I just changed like my website, studiolfmmichigan.com. Of course, I would love to have it studiolfm.com, but I ain't paying three grand for it, right? So if you have a business that you want to open, just learn from my mistakes, get your domain name first, get that locked in. And then, but first check the uh, trademark office to make sure that somebody doesn't already own that name and then go ahead and apply for your trademark and do it. If do it, if there's something like my booze and butts, somebody's going to try to steal my shit. They're going to do it right. They're going to do it. We used to call it wine and canvas with C A N V hyphen A S S. And then this is how I was like, Oh, I need a trademark it. Wine and canvas is trademarked. So the dude that owns wine and canvas reached out to me and he was like, nah, nope, you're not. And I was like, good for you. Good for you, smart man, getting it trademarked. So then I was like, I need to trademark my shit. And so I did. I'm so frightened someone will trademark hole in the wall. <laughs> you, better, you better get on it. Yeah. You better get on it. Right? It's so mm -hmm. cute. You gotta do it. I never thought somebody would try to steal it from me. I never yeah. thought. Right, because like, think about people think about do, like terrible things. That, like you, do. you, you haven't paid me in three months or whatever, and you, you know, like I can't. It, it's dinner for my family. You know, like any boundary that you have to set. Like we had a student come in that was strung out on meth, right? And I kicked her out, right? You got to go, right? So anybody that's disgruntled can to that's smart enough can totally screw you, and yeah, take your name. You can't do anything about it if it's not trademarked. You're right. I think um that's the the thing that's missing from a uh, studio owners like me who don't have a business background we think that everyone's so nice and kind and everything but like it's business and people are just doing business things that are available yeah 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 mm -hmm. oh i'm just I think thinking I'm about it like, should i trademark my class how do we do it, <laughs> do it. Uh -huh. i think about people who have built their brand Actually, I just listened to a podcast. Aspen's so great. She tells me about, she's the one that told me about your guys' podcast. Thank you, Aspen. She was like, hey, <laughs> apply you, to this Aspen. podcast. Yes, Thank she you. was my right hand. <laughs> so then we were listening to um, the Daily D, right? And he had, um, what's his name? Pull, pull boss, what's his name? Pull master, pull master. And he's, if you don't follow him on Insta, you're crazy. You need to follow him on Insta because he's amazing. He's a male entertainer and he is amazing. Yes, the pole master. And he does not have his name trademarked. He has hundreds of thousands of followers. I shouldn't have even said that, but he, he and he said it on the podcast. He said it on the podcast so I can share what he said on the podcast, right? It's fine. So can you imagine building your brand and your name and he has all these followers and then somebody trademarks it and now you can't have that name anymore? Now you got to change all, all your logos and your sign outside and your website and all that stuff. It's $500, $500 trademark your shit, trademark it. Man. Damn, $500, that's like a new certification. <laughs> right? <laughs> How much does it cost to like rebrand your whole entire existence though? I know, yeah. right? Damn. But just to also do, think like, about that too. Payment, like, like, like people would really go out of their way to do that because you said it was a long process that takes, you know, a long time, but people will do it. Yes. People will do it. Yes. Thank and, you for that maybe advice. Not in, maybe not even maliciously, right? Like yeah, I said, yeah. in Canvas, that wasn't malicious. I had no idea. Yeah. I, you yeah. know, like I said, when he told me it was trademarked, I said, congratulations, like good for you because you're brilliant, right? I had no clue. <laughs> so it's not necessarily always malicious, but... Yeah. Grass. Otherwise, I can't, you know, like, like I can't imagine having a rebrand studio with them or Fallon with them. Right. 
Like I was really mad that um, somebody had already taken our email address pole in the wall dot com at gmail dot com. <laughs> so we have to be the pole in the wall. <laughs> I was like, no. Rude. Can yeah, I would be devastated. Uh, what do you think about not having this email? <laughs> I tried. They don't you write their email address. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I'll give you a hundred bucks. Right. <laughs> wah, wah. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. A lot of a lot of food for thought for sure. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So more on that, more on all this stuff at the um Pretty Girl. Pretty Girls Ball yeah. operating studio like a boss. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a good resource that I have to uh take take advantage of for sure. And for yeah. everyone too, like that is just a dancer <laughs> opening yeah. a studio. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I think I think we touched all of the questions that I had wanted to ask. <laughs> Chris, do you have any any questions that we um do you, either of you have any advice that you give for any future studio owners or even pole dancers in general that you would like to share? Aspen. <laughs> um I guess for a studio owner, make sure that you take time for yourself. I've watched Fallon take on way too much. She's not a fan of delegating, and we've kind of forced her to this year to kind of use her resources or her instructors so then she can have that personal time that she needs for her body and her soul. Um, and then probably just as a dancer, I like to branch out and try new things. And so I think you find things by accident by trying to branch out and do new things. So I definitely recommend that. See, that's beautiful sure. advice. Yeah. Build a team that why. says you're doing too much shit and you need to delegate. You're too funny. <laughs> Build a team that says, boss, you're doing too much shit and you need to right? delegate. No, I think that's beautiful because that's so important because who else is going to tell you to stop if you're just like going all over the place? Yeah. So lucky. In this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that also too, Aspen, that you brought up like try new things because like accidental things might come out that are awesome because that always happens. Even like when students are in class and we try to do a trick and they don't get it right. Like sometimes they come up with the most beautiful things <laughs> just <I'm> randomly. <laughs> I always say, man, that's wrong as fuck, but it was real pretty. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Too funny. I think I've actually said that. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly interesting. Beautiful. Wrong as fuck, but beautiful. <laughs> right? Like, exactly. I'll do that. <laughs> Or my favorite, that wasn't the move, but that was a beautiful trick you just came up with. Yes, <laughs> yes that was way more pieces than I am. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Now I'm going to have to see, like, I definitely want to take an online class. So I have to see how far away we are. Maybe we can travel there and come in and take class in person to see your beautiful oh, space. Yeah, that'd be yeah. Cool. I don't know, that yeah. liquid motion exotic burn. Yep. <laughs> I wrote yeah. it down. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> um, for an online, um, if, say we want to take the class, but unfortunately our schedule doesn't work, can we sign up and get the video? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Everybody okay. that signs awesome. up for virtual, I would say like, man, maybe like 10% actually show up when we're recording it, right? And then everybody else gets the recording, which I kind of like the recordings because then you can rewind over and over to drill it Yay. yeah everybody will get the recording if you can't attend live that's awesome good to I know love that. it makes it makes it much easier for people because we want to go but sometimes it just does not fit right. yeah right and sometimes the connection doesn't work out too and you're like oh. <laughs> let me try this again later <laughs> um, well this was so much fun thank you so much for taking the time out to to meet with us yeah. and to show us your beautiful studio and to tell us about your oh, gee, your philosophies of your studio that I'm sure will be so helpful for others um, and all the wonderful resources as well. Yeah, thanks for yeah. having me. Pulse <laughs> you said you do your post Oaks workshop maybe once every quarter, right? I do. Writing this all down. Mm -hmm. The next one, which I know uh, the people listening can't make it, but the next one I have is the 29th. You can pop in on that. 
Yeah, yeah, that'll that'll work out for us. Mm -hmm. Not for everyone else. I wanted <laughs> I wanted to start pull soaks in my in the new house we're buying. So, oh my it's god, it's a game yeah. changer. Yeah, Instagram. So let's dr shamelessly drop Instagram plugs. I'm at Fallon Lafem, F as in Frank, A L L O N L A F as in Frank, E M M E. And then the studio, Studio Lafem, T M as in my shit's trademark, don't steal it. And then we have Aspen Lafem, A S P Y N L A F as in Frank, E M M E. Yep. And the pull silks, a lot of it, like there's a lot more probably on my Fallon Lafem. <laughs> Um, page because I don't want to like hog studio with them's content all the time so if you're like curious about where that can take you um, and kind of how you can move with that I'm really geeking out on it and I'm really trying to turn it into something that people haven't seen before because what I have seen is tricks and I'm real dirty <laughs> so I'm like a dirty person I love to move real nasty and dirty and I'm so sensual and sexual and so I'm trying to see how I can make the silks not only powerful but kind of nasty too so stay tuned for that because nobody's seen that that book. sounds like a fun time <laughs> right? I love it so much <laughs> and our what? silks glow in the dark Mm -hmm. And so we, um, our last class, we usually have the black lights on. It looks so awesome. I yes. recommend that's getting amazing. those if you get silk. Yes. It's a Hell whole yeah. Vibe. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds like a, a total experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hell oh, yeah. Gee. And we had a, a pole party at my house and no one touched the, the pole until a student came with the pole silks, put the pole silks on. <laughs> and then everyone was just like all over it. I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. but it's it good it's good if anybody's thinking about maybe getting some for their studio too I highly recommend it because it just makes going upside down feel a lot safer yeah and I like that you you talked about and it's on your website too where you talk about it's like a spotter um and yeah. it's really empowering for a lot of people to go upside down and make right. those beautiful shapes that they dream about right away <laughs> right and yeah. um it's harder for different body shapes to go upside down too and so this makes it more inclusive so that everybody can go upside down, which yeah. I really like. I want everybody to feel like they can be successful and sometimes pulls an asshole. <laughs> yes. For different reasons. Yeah. So the kind of, yeah, sweaty hands, man, the silks actually want a little moisture on your hands. So it's like the things that suck about the pull, the silks kind of make better. Love it. Yep. Yes. <laughs> um, I guess that's it for, for our episode today Crystal unless you have anything else to I think you're on mute no I'm just thinking about the pulse notes and then the liquid motion I'm excited <laughs> and then what you mentioned about the network you've definitely given us a lot of food for thought mm. Yay. Happy to be of service. Yes. <laughs> We're so appreciative of these talks. Like I said before, it's hard for our studio owners to like connect with each other. So it's really cool um, these opportunities to share. Um, and hopefully yeah. it'll help spread the word too to others. Yeah. And feel free yeah. to send me DMs if you have questions about stuff. I'm an open book, you know, or like um, brain, like thoughts or anything. Send me a DMs. Anybody that's listening can as well. Thank you, you for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll have all that information in the comments, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then on that note, I guess we should sign out. Yeah. <laughs> we can all go eat dinner, smoke a blunt. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My name is Mandy Mac. Ooh. And I am Chris Rivers. Ooh. We are with Fallon and Aspen of Fallon. Um, Studio 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 oh my god, I couldn't say it at the moment. <laughs> I love those heels and she licked it too. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs>